Hi, and thank you for joining us here at PLCGurus.net's YouTube channel. If you like this and similar type videos, please do click the subscribe button. Also, if you do find this video useful, please click the like button below. And just a quick uh, plug for our blog site, you can visit us at www.plcgurus.net. I'll include a link here to the blog site where you'll find a community of, of people or members just like you who are, well, number one, have a passion for industrial automation and control systems and who want to share some of their experiences, problems, and solutions. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at how to use RS Logic's Emulate 5000 software. Um, so what this software allows you to do is uh, configure a virtual chassis that has a controller, it has uh, I.O., and it allows you to generate a program, download that program to it, and actually see your ladder logic functioning in real time. So there's a lot of advantages to it. Obviously, um, when you're first getting your feet wet into, into programming, it can be a very useful tool. Uh, so you don't have to go out and spend you know, thousands of dollars to buy the actual physical hardware. Um, that said, there are some limitations. And the biggest one is the inability to have any analog I.O. present in the chassis. So really, you're limited to um, discrete I.O. only. But nonetheless, let's get going. Uh, so you can see here I have the RS Logic 5000 um, shortcut on my desktop here. So I'm going to double click that to launch it. Yes. Okay, so now I get this this kind of this little screen here. That's it's like a virtual chassis. So I'm not going to be using all these slots. So I think what we'll do is just we'll configure two of them. So I'm going to set up. I'm going to select slot two. These ones are set up for the RS Links. Um, communications and we'll set up an RS Links driver to communicate to this virtual chassis in a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna re we're gonna start with putting our CPU into slot two. So I'm gonna right click that, click create, and the you want to select the first one, the emulator RS Logix Emulate 5000 controller. You're gonna click OK. Uh, version 20. I mean, depending on which version of the RS Logix 5000 software you have, uh, will determine what options you have here. Remember the the software version has to match the firmware version, the same as with the emulated version here as well. Um, so I'm just going to click Next. You know what, I'm just going to accept the defaults on all of these. And now you can see I have an emulated CPU in slot 2 here. Okay, so let's add some discrete I.O. modules now. So I'm going to add two of them. So I'm going to, same workflow here, I'm going to right click, Create. This time I'm going to choose the 1789 SIM 32 point input output simulator. I'm going to click OK. Slot 3, yeah, I want to put it in slot 3. And now I can put a label for the marquee. So I'm going to call this one uh, Input. And click Finish. Now you can see it, it actually scrolls across the screen. Input. All right, so let's add an output. So again, it's the same, same uh, module here. Click OK. Click Next. And this one I'll call Output. Finish. Okay, so that's basically it for for this configuration. I mean, you can carry on if you like, but I think for the purpose of this tutorial, um, that'll be sufficient. So let's head on over to RS Links and let's make sure that we can communicate to this thing. So let's launch RS Links. If you haven't seen my RS Links videos, I'll include a um, uh, an annotation here in the video to get you there. It's part of our Mastery Control Logic series. But here we go. So let's just expand that. So you can see I already have an Ethernet IP driver configured, but we're going to go ahead and configure a new driver for to communicate to our virtual backplane here. So I'm going to go configure drivers, and then I'm going to go to the available driver types, and you want to scroll down to you see this virtual backplane SoftLogix USB driver. So I'm going to click Add New, and I'll use the default name. That's fine. Uh, slot zero. Uh, that's fine, and click OK. Now let's go ahead and drill into that driver we just created. So you can see now it's it's automatically picking up things. So there's my workstation, my RSLink server. It's coming up with a it's just missing an EDS file here. Uh, but that's the slot one RS links here. And you can see here I have my processor, my emulator here, and I have my two input output modules here. Okay, good. So that went well. So let's go ahead, we can minimize this. 
We can minimize this and let's go right into our Logix 5000. Okay, so we have our Logix 5000 software opened up here, and I have the um, our virtual backplane up in the corner here, so we can see what's happening and interact with that at the same time. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to New Project, and again, if you don't have the emulator type selected here, it'll be right at the bottom of the CPU type list. Okay, again, remember our software version has to match the firmware version, and yes, it still has, does on the emulator version as well. So we'll make keep that at 20. We'll give it a name. So my emulated project. Okay, chassis size seven is fine. Okay, so slots. So remember, we have to these have to match. So our emulator CPU is in slot number two. So let's make that the same slot two, and we click OK. So let that do its thing. All right. So here we go. We have our new project template uh, opened up for us here and we can see that we have the emulator CPU in slot number two in our IO configuration tree here. So let's go ahead and start adding our first simulated module here which in this case we're going to say is an input module. So to do that I'm going to right click the backplane new module and here we'll get the select module type and on the left side here you'll see you'll have every single module that Alan Bradley makes in this catalog and then on the right side you have some third-party uh, certified Rockwell partners that make their own modules for the Logix chassis as well or the Logix platform as well so I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this so we don't have to look at everything I'm gonna scroll down choose other and for the simulated modules you want to choose the generic 1756 module I'm gonna select that click create let's give it a name so I'm gonna call this my simulated input module and for the assembly instance so for the input you want to make that one and for the size you'll want to make that two and notice these are 32-bit words and I'll explain why in a minute um, this just happens to be what you have to do for these simulated modules um, so it's gonna be two 32-bit words and for the output the assembly instance ID is two and the size for the output can just be one. And then for the configuration, you want to make the assembly instance ID 16 and the size zero is fine. We'll click OK. And very important here, you do want to update the request packet interval. Um, you'll, you'll run into connection issues if you leave it at the default five milliseconds. So I'm going to choose 50 here. That's recommended by Rockwell. And click apply and click OK. All right, oh, we made a little boo-boo there. We didn't put the input module in the right sl slot, no worries. We can simply go back just by right-clicking it, properties, and put that into the appropriate slot. So we want to have it in slot three there. So there you go, well, it's good to see that you can change it. You're not, you're not dead in the water if you make a mistake. All right, good. So there we go, we're in slot three. So let's just go to our controller tag database because when we add a module to the I.O. configuration tree, it behind the scenes is making all of the proper tag entries into our controller tag database here. So I'll double click that and you can see that it has added three entries into my controller tag database. Uh, configuration tag, a, an input tag here, and you see it should be size two. So we see there's two word elements. And then there is the output tag, which we're not actually going to utilize because we're designated this as an input module but I do want to go here so why do we have to create two words here well because if I go over to my emulator if I right click slot 3 properties and I go to IO data you can see here I have the ability to toggle bits on and off okay so let's go ahead and open that and I'm gonna open the one for slot 4 as well just so we can do some stuff and see some up updating okay so there we go we have our slot 3 slot 4 there's our IO points so the reason we had to make the input slots or the input uh, word of length 2 is because these operate on the first array word here array word 1 um, they don't actually work on the first word so it's just uh, uh, 
I'm not sure why they do it. I guess uh, zero is a reserved word. And then, so we're going to actually reference this. And then when we download our online, we should be able to toggle any of those inputs using this uh, dashboard here. And we should see those update in real time. Okay, so while we're here, let's go ahead and call this a start motor push button. There we go. All right, good. So let's go back now and add that other module. So I'm going to go new module. So it's the same workflow. We're going to deselect that. I'm going to go a little quicker for this one. We're going to go other and generic create. Let's call this simulated output module. Again, input ID is assembly instance is one, length is two, assembly instance is two for the output, length is one, configuration ID is 16. And let's remember the right slot this time, slot four. Okay, let's click OK. And welcome, that didn't. Okay, so let's go back into properties just by double clicking. And let's make sure we update that uh, RPI value there. Okay, I must have deselected uh, to have it show the properties box. Okay, so there we go. So now you can see we're still in the controller tag database here. And now we have a new entry for slot four. Perfect. So let's go ahead and expand the actual word we're going to use here, the data word. Zero, and there's the 32 bits of output points that we can actually wire up to in our logic. So let's make bit zero our motor contactor enable. All right. Good. So let's go over and just write a simple little program. So I'm going to expand the main program, main routine. Double click that. I'm in the logics designer. I'm going to drop on an, the, an XIC, examine a close instruction, and an output instruction, an OTE. And I'm going to go ahead and assign this an address. So let's go ahead and assign it the output address, output bit zero. So I'm going to hit this little fly out, and it will get me to bit zero. And there we have it. And let's do the same thing here. So I'm just going to double click this question mark, go to the input card this time, input data. Now remember, we want to use in this case, just for these simulated IOs, I'm going to use word one in the array and bit zero. All right, so let's save our project. Save. And let's go ahead and download it. So remember, when you want to download to an endpoint or a controller, you want to make sure that you have this path here defined. All right, so let's go into Who Active. So remember what Who Active is. If you haven't watched our RSLINKS videos, I'll put a link up there. Uh, so you can get to those. It's part of our Mastering Control Logic series. And you can see here is our uh, virtual driver, and we want to select the CPU in slot 2. And now we have an option to go ahead and download that. Okay. So let's get our warning. Do you sure you want to do this? Yes, I do. And there we go. So we're compiling. We're downloading into... So remember, we're actually... This is the exact same workflow as if you would had a real control logics chassis in front of you. So this is great. This is a great learning tool. Okay, so you can see here I am in remote run. You can see my emulator's run status has updated. And here we go. I have a simple little program that really doesn't do anything. But let's go ahead and see if we can simulate that input. And there we go. So you can see here I've simulated that input. My output is enabled. And you can see the output is updated here as well. And everything is good. So I think that pretty much covers. I mean, obviously, you can go in and do as much as you like here. But I think for the purpose of this tutorial, um, I think we're good. So I hope you found this video informative. And please uh, subscribe to our channel and go ahead and check out our blog site at www.plcgurus.net. Thanks so much and have a great day.